Our guest today is Brenda Ngoli. Say it. Ngoli. The super vivacious actress. It's been, <laughs> even before we started taping here, it's been absolutely wonderful just sitting here and sharing some thoughts with you. I just want to ask you one thing. You came in with this bowl of green stuff. <laughs> What, what, what was in it? Does that uh, give you the energy that you've got? Yes, I'd hope so. Well, I'm a big fan of juicing. So, yeah, I'm a juiceaholic, so I juice almost anything and everything. And today I made um, apples and cucumber. So, yeah, from time to time I'll juice like anything, like lettuce. Yeah, I just juice. That's what I... I eat. was with uh, DJ Boo last week. He's yeah. got an energy drink. And oh. I think you should actually try that one. Uh, no, 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 We're no, trying no. to sell it. I'm trying to help him. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't endorse things that I don't get paid for. <laughs> That's a shame. When he's, he's, he's battling. Just give him a break. No, I don't <laughs> think he's battling. I think he's doing great. If you're mentioning him in my interview, he's doing too well. <laughs> but really, um, you're an actress. I mean, yes. you're, you're, you're in a new series called Hustle. Hustle, yes. I, yes. I want to ask you something. And it's always bothered me. This, this is a, uh, a sitcom. No, it's, oh, uh, yeah, it's a TV drama, I'd, I'd say, which comes in like six part series. And we're shooting like about, uh, we're shooting four seasons of it back to back. So yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like Empire or something like that. I, I just want to ask you, how do you decide on the episodes? Is this all written beginning? Or do you go episode by episode by episode? Well, um, what usually happens, because I actually don't stay in Johannesburg, I moved back to the Eastern Cape after I've been in the industry for like about 15 years. Um, well, I'm actually celebrating my 15th year this year. So two years ago, I decided to go to the Eastern Cape and I work from there. So it's a big part. That's a big, we're in the Eastern Cape. <laughs> in Tomo, I'm from Tomo, which is about uh, 90 k's away from Queenstown, like in inland, rolling hills. That's really the rural Cape. though. Yes, I'm talking about rural. I'm a rural You guy. don't look to me like a rural Go. I'm very rural. I could chase a cow in this <laughs> in these shoes. <laughs> if there's an animal, I'll go get it. <laughs> but um, so yeah. So, <laughs> so what they did is that they gave me a call. They told me about this character. Um, they sent me like a brief uh, description of the character and a character. Well, they can call it like character bibles, etc. Mm -hmm. And what the show was about. And um, I'm quite picky and finicky about the kind of mm. shows I associate with. So I took it from there, sat down with my management team and we were like, okay, well, this sounds like a great project. Um, and yeah, quite frankly, they are busy writing as we're shooting, which is like a lot of pressure, um, but it's also quite interesting and exciting because we do like a lot of improvisation. Mm. Improvisation yeah. is like the style so of the So these shows evolve? Well, yes, from the script to what actually you see on screen, mm. most of the time, the most common thing these days is improvisation, mm. personalization of characters, mm. which also just brings a lot of meat to the character, mm. I mean, to the characters mm. and to the storylines. So, yeah, and uh, working with a very exciting um, director, Kolani Kubega, um, Jamil, he's the one whose mm. uh, film got uh, banned in South Africa and then he went and won like uh, awards and then they re unbanned it again. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's unbanning in TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, is, it an, uh, is this a banning type movie or is it, uh, yes, is look, it just a story? <clears throat> look, I don't know about banning, but mm. I think it's definitely, um, yes, it's a, it's a banning type In thing. In what sense? Political? No, not really. Relationships. It, yes, relationships. It mm. actually deals with the music industry, the entertainment mm. industry. So the the principal character that I play is molded around, uh, is based on Brenda Fasi, your Lebo mm. Matosa. So, so like your your characters mm. that you'd love to hate, but they just have like that je ne sais quoi that everybody loves, mm. you know. Um. So yeah. So it it really digs deep into what is this music industry, what and mm. hopefully we'll be able to portray what it's like to be someone who's in the limelight pop divas. yeah well the pop divas mm. and what it feels like to have entertainment i mean to have uh, a talent because talent comes with a burden mm. it you know having a skill and it's i don't know i, I always used to feel like i'm the um, sacrificial lamb <laughs> well on many levels look do you have to keep a public persona is that what worries you um, no, I don't feel you have to keep a public persona, but I mean, when you're growing up, mm. I think people can be tempted mm. to fall into that trap mm. of playing the public persona. Mm. Um, I know that a lot of the times people 
um, want to, because everybody goes, I love you, and they expect mm. you to be rich, and mm. they expect you to have the mm. fancy cars, people then mm. want to, you know, keep up mm. with the Joneses, which mm. is, I suppose, happens for everybody, except for us, it's like injected a hundred times more. Mm. So I've always been that person who's just like, I wasn't born rich. I am not rich. <laughs> uh, the entertainment industry does not pay well. Mm. There's a lot of exploitation and I cannot live my life acting. I get paid to act, so I'm not going to act in real life. Mm. Hence the whole move back to the Eastern mm. Cape and just being who I really am. I mean, I'm turning 36 this year. I don't have time to act anymore. And I, quite frankly, I don't even have time to care what the public, public thinks of thinking. me because then I'm going to get caught up in the media and I'm losing the true essence of who I am. How did you get into it? 15 years, what what brought you into it? Because you sound very level-headed. <laughs> no, no, honestly. No, you do. You know, Thank you sound you. like your value system is is very strong and that you're gonna, you know, you'll survive. You'll thank survive you. even when things don't go your way. Mm, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Look, I got into it. I grew up uh, as a domestic worker's daughter, product of the migrant labor system from the Eastern Cape to Cape Town. I grew up in Musenberg, uh, went to Musenberg High School, went to St. James Primary in Cork Bay, which is a fisherman's school just uh, up in the hill. By the, it's a by lovely the, part of the world. Yes, then. yes. Mm. As I was a domestic worker's daughter. I was in the burbs. <laughs> well, in a small room at the back. <laughs> but I was still in the burbs. <laughs> anyway, I was in the cottage. I was in the loft. <laughs> but anyway, uh -huh. um, and then I went to, <laughs> then, I, then I went to uh, UCT. Well, at Musenbeck High School, I was introduced to the concept of stage because obviously at the fisherman's school, there wasn't even a stage. So I mean, if you were going to do like Christmas carols, you'd have to, we used to do it at, at, at the church um, at, by the station. <laughs> and we'd sing there, Mary had a little lamb. And that was the, mm. the only thing you're going to be practicing. Then I got to Musenbeck High and all of a sudden we had a hall. We had a stage, you know, I was introduced to the smell of a stage, the, the, the concept of curtains, um, the, the, the concept of microphone, you know, um, the concept of plays, one act plays, and that's how then I got into it. Um, at that time, I was very much into athletics and running and long distance, but I swapped that for the stage, uh, swapped a lot of things for the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Good results, no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, but then, and then afterwards, I went to UCT, Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the degree. I'm not Pala Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you not have a degree? Well, um, in my third year, I then... <laughs> I th oh, I had major issues with the institution, but they were wonderful. I had wonderful teachers, though. Mm. I think it was the institution and, and what I felt... You were studying drama, I would yes, presume. Yes, yes. Yeah. No, no, no. I was studying drama. Um, and then, anyway, long story short, uh, my third year, I went for auditions. Uh, there was some cake net thing. That cake was, net? Yes. <laughs> yeah. First time I came to, <laughs> to work in Joburg, I was employed by uh, Mnet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't get the cake net thing. Uh, well, no, no, no. I didn't get the cake net thing, but then I got... Another job, mm. yeah. And then, so I was like a presenter on Mnet, wara, 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 wara. I was 20, okay. I got fired. <laughs> you got fired? <laughs> yes. Then I went back to Cape Town. Why were you fired? I, I didn't go to work. <laughs> <laughs> I was 20. That's a valid reason. <laughs> well, yeah, I was 20. I didn't have a mother around. It was my first time away from home. And quite frankly, I didn't get the cutthroat of the industry. I remember the main reason why I got fired is that the makeup artist, now you, you don't know these things, that the makeup artist is not the production coordinator, <laughs> they're not no. your boss. No. So the makeup artist would tell me, no, 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 you're not on call today. Then Nama wouldn't go to call <laughs> and call. And then someone would call and say, hey, Brenda Weaver, how are you? I'd be like, I'm down the road, so-and-so, who's so-and-so, so-and-so is not your boss. <laughs> then you rock up and then you're in trouble. Mm. So look, and then I got fired. And then I went back to Cape Town, <laughs> very sad, very depressed, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did like a one-woman show, went to Grand Sound. Long story short, I got my break. Mm -hmm. I went for an audition. There's a guy called Tim Green, mm -hmm. who then uh, was in Cape Town at the time. Uh, we were at Ganesh and he was like, hey, we're having auditions. Have you heard about it? I went through and that's how I, you know, started coming to Joburg for acting mm -hmm. in a show called uh, Cha Cha. Uh, which was like HIV, education, AIDS. Um, actually, the one and only, apart from Soul City, it was the one and only show that I can remember 
that uh, dealt with HIV AIDS and education at the time. It was endorsed by USAID, whatever, whatever. Mm. Yeah, and that's how I got into and it. from then on, it's sitcoms and a lot yes, of... Yes, a lot of, of sitcoms. Yeah. Uh, but um, you've done well. <coughs> yes, I, mean, I you've have. you've done well. But I can see from your uh, CV, you know, from the shows that you presented in, they're well you. known and everybody knows you, recognizes you. Yes, yes. How do you remember your lines? Um, <laughs> with difficulty or is it, a, is it something you develop? No. Stay in character. Is that so? Yes. I think if you stay in character and yeah, just be true to the world, mm. everything else comes secondary because then it's, it's a memory. It's almost like you're reciting a memory rather than... We're going to end off soon because mm. this is a very short show. But you were in Spud. Yes. I'm trying to remember where I saw you in Spud. I love Spud. <laughs> I love Spud too. <laughs> but um, if we're going to be having a story about the old white South Africa, if, if I'm black in the show, I'm going to be in the kitchen cleaning. So here, I was the of maid. Of course, you were the Innocence. maid. You were, you were, you were great though. Yeah, thank you. Hey, of course. Yeah, we're, uh, absolutely. I, that was a brilliant role. You were magnificent. When, when 94 came, you sat on the couch there, kicked them yes. off. I love that. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was <me>. you. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful way to end. It's been wonderful having you here. Thank you're vivacious, you. you're great. I'm sure I'm going to get the recipe for that juice there because I'm sure that's what gives you all this yes, uh, yes. Ample juice, energy juice. and beauty. <laughs> You've been on the couch with me, David Shapira, and Brenda. Ol say it. Oli. Oh, you're gonna have to take me out to dinner so I can like. <laughs> Great. Moli, <laughs> <laughs>